do, I just find f of 9. And 62 plus 35 log 9 minus 4. I thought it was h9. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, of course. I just want to, you're right, of course. So let's plug it in. We can't do this without the graphing calculator. So let's plug it in. I knew there was one more window that I didn't open. Sorry. Okay, so um, 62 plus 35, log, in parentheses, 5, close the parentheses, enter. So 86, and I'm assuming the uh, height is given in inches or centimeters or... It has to be. So that's just the answer. That's the answer. So where, why don't we plug in the 9? 9 minus 4 is 5. Anything else? Because I got the same answer, and my computer told me I was wrong. Uh, maybe it said uh, round up, round down, what this, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's why you consider it wrong. You have to read the fine print. So it would be 86.5 then <clears throat> centimeters, depending on how they want you to approximate it. Very good. Anything else? Anything else that you worked on? Other questions for me? Anything? Anything? Okay, so we are in the middle of section 4.3, and we learned how to expand. If you want more examples with expand, expanding um, exponential, uh, expanding uh, ex uh, logarithmic expressions, please let me know. If not, we move on to condensing. Another expanding. Very good. Let's do another expanding. Like, uh, let's say, 30... 39 on page 501 and we have log common log and in brackets 10 x squared the cube root of 1 minus x everything divided by 7 x plus 1 squared let me make sure I didn't copy part of one problem and part of the other sometimes I do that okay so how many quantities we see here Yes. How many expressions, or I shouldn't say, how many factors, how many quantities we see here? Here's what I see. I see 10. I see x squared. I see 10. I see x squared. I see the cube root. I see 7. I see x plus 1 squared. So one, two, three, four, five quantities. How many quantities will have minus in front of the log and how many quantities will have plus in front of the log? One, will have plus, one, will have one two, three will have plus. One, two will have? Negative. That's it. Let's continue with that. Log 10 plus log x squared plus log the cube root of 1 minus x minus log 7 minus log x plus 1 squared. That's the easiest thing to do. Yes, please. How do you know that it's plus or minus? OK. The product rule, when we apply log to a product, we have plus. When we apply log to a quotient, we have minus. Oh. The numerator will have positive in front, but the denominator will have negative in front. Okay. Better? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Can you just go back down? On this? No. Okay.
Now, what about log base 10 of 10? Very good. We discussed that, correct? Okay, let's say we didn't. So let's make a little note here. Note. Log base A from the base. 9 of 9, 1 half of 1 half, 10 of 10, E of E, in other words. Any base but the same. This and this are the same. These two are the same. Is unknown. Let's change this into an exponential equation. A from the base counterclockwise. A raised to which number is A? What could the power be? 1. So that's why this is x is 10. What is the base? I don't see the base. By convention, is 10. So that's why this is 1. What about natural log E? How much will this be? 1. Because the base of ln is E. We don't write it, but it's base E. So log in any base of the number that represents the base is always 1. Very good. So now let's continue. I circled the answer, I mean the equal symbol, so you know I'll continue somewhere else. Okay, so I replace this by 1. Plus, what do I replace this by? Applying the power rule now. 2 log x, awesome. Plus, what do I replace this one by? Applying the power rule. Very good, awesome. Log in parentheses 1 minus x. Remember, we do not have a rule for addition or subtraction inside the log. You cannot touch this. You can only change log of a product, product, ratio, or power. Not log of a sum or difference. Same thing with the square root. Same idea. Okay, minus. No one can change log 7, but I can change this using the power rule. Minus 2 log x plus 1, which no one can change. So this was another example with expanding. Any questions on this? So that's the final answer. That's the final answer. Let's move on to condensing. Let's start with, so this is condensing. Log expressions. We will go backwards, meaning we will we'll be given something like this, and we will come up with this. One log with a coefficient of 1 and everything inside there. Ready? So my suggestion is 53. You can choose any problem you want. 2 log base b of x plus 3 log base b of y. Which property we have to apply first? Not add. The numbers in front come from the power or those expressions. The number in hand comes from the power of that expression. That's the power rule, the third rule. So this is equal to log base b of x squared plus log base b of y cubed. Now I can condense using which rule? Log base b of the, yes, the product rule. So what do I have in parentheses or not? It doesn't matter. x squared x cubed. Awesome. Any questions? What would you do if it's one? I can move it one anywhere. No. Like one plus log. Oh, awesome. Let's try that. One plus log in which base? Uh, uh, B. B of? X. Perfect. So can anyone replace one by a log? Exactly. 
plus log right. base b of x. And now this is log base b of that's it. Very good. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. That's very good. Okay, problem 70. Good point. Log base b of x. No, it's base 10. It doesn't matter. But let me erase it. It's common log. Okay. Common log x uh, plus common log x squared minus 4 uh, minus log 15 and minus common log x plus 2. This should be a one-time deal. Just one answer. Quickly. Log of what? How many logs have plus in front? So their quantities will stay at the top, will go to the top. How many have negative in front? Two. Two. They will be in the denominator. So this must be a ratio. The top? X. Yes. Where? And the denominator. Oh. Very good. I will factor this because I see that I can simplify. How will you factor the top? Perfect. Log x, x plus 2, x minus 2, divided by 15, x plus 2. Do you remember that we covered, we looked at this on the first day of classes, on the first handout? How many times did it appear already? 100 times? Even if it's 50, it's still a lot. Okay, so now I'm simplifying. I have to write that x not equal negative 2 at least to that. There are other restrictions here as well. Log x, x minus 2 over 15. Now, let's take a look at log base 3 of 5. I want to determine this. I have no idea what it is, but I know I can change it into an exponential equation, which is raised to exactly equals 5. Is there any way I can predict this without a calculator? No. I can say that it cannot be more than 2, because 3 squared will be 9. I can say it has to be more than 1, because 3 to the first power is 1. So it has to be a number between 1 and 2, 1 and 2, but I would not be able to tell you what it is. There is a way to determine this. Most of the calculators, like this one, for example, and I don't know the software will check, uh, does not allow us to put in the base we want. We only have these two, LOG, which is base 10, and LN, which is base E. If you have a sophisticated calculator that allows you to put in a, a base you want, it's a different story. But most of them, or at least the ones that I have, don't. That's why we'll need to discuss the change of base formula. So log base 3 of 5 can be presented, and it will be only one number. You, is that clear? That we will not be able to find two numbers that we raise 3 to to get 5, right? There is only one. Some number between 1 and 2, guaranteed. OK, so it doesn't matter which of these two you use. You don't have to use both. You will get the same number with both. So here is the change of base formula. If we want to use common log, it's a ratio of two logs. It's not the quotient rule. The quotient rule is log applied to a ratio. This is not the case. This is the quotient of two logs. Log of the number over log of the previous base. What could be the other option? What do you think? 
We have two keys in the calculator. We have two special net uh, logs. One five over one three. Exactly. It doesn't matter which one you apply, but you have to be consistent. You cannot write log here and lm here. So it's either log common log over common log or natural log over natural log. So let's go to the calculator. Am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. OK. So common log 5 divided by common log 3. And if you want, natural log 5 divided by natural <coughs> log 3. Have to get the same answer. There is only <coughs> one number. We expected a number between 1 and 2. Now, how do I check this? I raise yes. 3 to this power. Yes, awesome. So 3 raised to, in parentheses, I know you may say, no, you don't need that. OK. Previous answer. And close the parentheses. Previous answer is the yellow key or the blue key and the minus key at the bottom. So when I cl click Enter, what should I get? Because I'm using the whole number, I should not get any approximations. I should get 5. Awesome. So that is a number that I raise 3 to to get 5. Any questions? Um, yes? Yeah. Yes, because you did not put the previous answer. You approximated. I put the whole answer. Yeah. No, nope, you truncated the answer. There are infinitely many decimals, decimal digits after this one. If you just put all this, you will never get five. Is that okay? Jeremy, clear? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, moving on. Good. So um, we are finally getting to 4.4. Exponential and log equations. That's why we studied especially condensing, and that's why we study exponential and log equations before we look at applications. Okay? We already know how to solve one type, the simplest possible one that we looked at. So let's move on to. The next level. Please choose if you like. We are on page. Allow me to choose the first one and then you'll choose the next one. On page 514, I would like to continue with number 19. And that is 8 to x plus 3 equals 16 to x minus 1. First, um, I know that this is an equation. It has a left-hand side. It has a right-hand side. And um, then I have to ask myself, what type of equation is it? Is it um, absolute value, linear, quadratic? Of course. It's exponential because the variable is at the exponent level. It must be exponential. Perfect. My next question to myself is this. Can I present both sides with the same base? If I can, I'm in business. If I cannot, I have to think about a different way. Yes, I can. So then the left-hand side can be changed into to the, very good, everything to x plus 3. And the right-hand side will be changed into everything to x minus 1. Now I have to dig deep. There is a property that says a raised to the nth power, everything to another power m. I copy the base. What happens to the exponents? Not, uh, this is not log yet? Multiply. Multiply, awesome. n times m. So then I copy the base. And then what do I write on the left-hand side? Exactly. What do I write on the right hand side? Very good. I'm back in business, meaning I have two numbers that are equal and they have the same base. 
what has to happen? The exponents must be equal. So we do not cancel anything. We do not divide by anything. We don't simplify anything. We just think. Two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. In other words, I'm saying, can this be 15 and this 20? No, because 2 to the 15th will not equal 2 to the 20th, right? Can this be negative 3 and this 4? No, 2 to negative 3 will not equal 2 to the 4th. So it's, it's a must that 3x plus 9 equal 4x minus 4. No other way. I move 4x and I get negative x. I move 9, I get negative 13. Therefore, x equals 13. See if you want to choose another problem from 1 through 22. If not, we move on to a slightly higher level. 1 through 22. 22. 22. Any questions on 19? OK. Uh, e to x plus 4 equals 1 over e to 2x. I know it's an equation. I need to identify the type. What type is it? Exponential, because the variable is at the exponent level. There is nothing I can do to the left-hand side, but there must be something I can do to the right one. I would love to see the same base on both sides. E to the power of negative 2x. Thank you very much. Awesome. Do we agree with this? Thank you, Jeremy. OK, I'm back in business. Two numbers are the same, and they have the same base. What has to happen? x plus 4 must equal negative 2x, or 4 equals negative 3x, or x equals negative 4 thirds. I would like to check this. What if I have an error? Here's how I'm going to check. I'm going to move this term to the other side. So I'm going to check in this equation. in the graphing calculator only for convenience. Can I check in this? Yes. But I'll show you why I check in that after moving the um, right-hand term to the left-hand side. Let's do that. You'll see in a minute why. OK, so let's say I have a calculation that I have to perform. Let's say I don't get negative 4 thirds without calculating who knows what. So I have negative 4 divided by 3. It's this number. So now we go to typing in second and e to the x in parentheses. Our problem has x plus 4. Previous answer, second and the negative key, and plus 4. Close the parentheses. Go down now, minus 1 divided by e to the x, and in parentheses, 2 multiplied by the previous answer. So if I check in this equation instead of calculating the left and calculating the right, then I have to enter this number twice. But right now, it's here and here, and it's this number, not just this, the whole number, all the digits will be in there. When I press Enter, if this number is correct as the solution, negative 4 thirds, what should I get as the answer here? Yeah. Of course. Thank you, Amanda. Well done. If I don't get 0, then negative 4 thirds is not correct. Good. Is this clear? Y minus 1 the first one. Say it again? The e to the power of the um, answer plus 4 minus 1. Why? What does that mean? It's the original problem. It's the original problem. No, it's the minus 1 part. I move this term to this side and have 0 on the right hand side. I'm checking in this because I want this number to be the same. 
If I check the left hand side, I will get an answer. And if I check this right hand side, I will put in the other answer instead of putting in this number. I was uh, separating with the division sign. So oh, OK. No. That, that OK. Very good. Is that clear now? Only because I don't want to type it twice. I don't want to type the answer twice. OK, now let's move on to the next step, next level. Uh, problems 23 through 42. Let's start with, uh, let's say, 33. In 33, we have e to 1 minus 5x equals 793. Can I make e and 793 with the same base? The answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. So there must be a different way here. Let's look at another problem that we looked at a long time ago. Something like the square of x equals 2. What type of equation is this? Square root or radical. Perfect. How did we solve it? Uh, what if we took the both sides to the third power? Of course it's wrong. Right? I cannot raise to the third power. Why? Because x cubed and the square of x are not inverses of each other. x squared and the square of x are inverses of each other, and they will cancel their effect on x. Correct? OK, now let's look at this problem. I want to apply a mechanism. Of course, the other side is still 2, also 2. I want to apply a mechanism like I did here. I square both sides to clear everything on x. This took care of this. And I need to do the same thing over there. But what function would I apply to both sides? It must be the inverse of that. Because here I apply the inverse of the square of x, which is power 2. What is the inverse function of e to the x? Natural log. Thank you. So we apply natural log to both sides. That will allow us to bring the power. This is the only function that allows us to bring the power down. So 1 minus 5x, I should not write natural log e, but let's write it for now, equals natural log of 793. Please do not get intimidated by this number. It's just a number. Yes, it has ln in front of it, but it's just a number. But what did we say about the natural law of the base apply to the base? 1. So therefore, the equation now is 1 minus 5x equals natural log of 793. This is a linear equation now. I'm solving for x. This is just a number. Ignore it. It's just a simple number. Looking sophisticated, but it's just a number. How do I solve for x? Very good. And awesome. x equals 1 fifth minus 1 fifth natural log 793. I want to approximate this. We're not going to do it on all problems, but let's approximate it and go back and check. How will I check and where will I check? Here's how I will check. I will check into e raised to 1 minus 5x minus 793 equals 0. After I get the approximation, I will put it in this equation. So let's do that. And we have 1 fifth, or 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2, uh, natural log, 793. Close the parentheses and press Enter. So it's negative 1.14, approximately. Do not erase or delete this number. I want now to plug in second and e to the x in parentheses 1 minus 5 multiplied by the previous answer. So the calculator takes it off. And then minus 793. If this is the correct answer, when I click Enter or press Enter, what should I get? 0. So this is the error of the calculator. So if you get something like this, this is what it means. 0 0.00000000012. What does that mean?
evening here. There are 10 digits, nine zeros and one. So that is zero. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, ladies, thank you. Any questions? OK. Moving on to what I think is the longest. I wouldn't say it's difficult, but we, we have to practice. Um, problem 30, no, on line 41. 7 raised to, sorry, it's 5. 5 raised to 2x plus 3 equals 3 raised to x minus 1. No, 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 I'm just, uh, I was looking at something else by mistake. So 5 raised to 2x plus 3 equals 3 raised to x minus 1. So first question for you is, can I make um, 5 and 3 with the same base? No, of course not. So I go directly to the mechanism. What mechanism am I talking about? Say it again. When we applied log. And we will apply one of the two logs that we have in the calculator. Either LOG or LN. Common log or natural log. It doesn't matter which one you want. Now, if one of these two is 10, I will apply 10. Log base 10, common log. If one of these two bases is E, I will apply natural log. But if none of them is 10 or E, it doesn't matter. You choose. But you have to apply the same log to both sides. You cannot apply natural log here and log here. Is that clear? You have to be consistent. Which log do you want to apply? Common, Common log? OK. Natural log is easier to write than LOG, but it doesn't matter. Let's apply LOG this time. So what happens? What do I have to write? If I write it like this, this will be wrong. Why? Exactly. Because if I don't put parentheses, only 3 is the factor of log 5. But I want the factor to be 2x plus 3 because 2x plus 3 was the power of 5. What about the right-hand side? x minus 1 in parentheses, log 3. Awesome. Well done. Good. What do you think we need to do next? Remember, we are solving for x. Don't say anything before I give you a little hint. x is in two spots. So what would be my next thought or next step? I must Thank you very much. 2x log 5 plus 3 log 5 equals x log 3 minus log 3. Awesome. Of course. It's hidden. It still x is somewhere in, inside parentheses. I, parentheses. I have to, to distribute. Very good. Awesome. Then what? Do not get intimidated by any log 5 or log 3. They're just numbers. If it's quadratic, or polynomial, or rational, but this is linear, x is power 1. It's not in the denominator. It doesn't have power 2. It's linear. How do we solve a linear equation? Say it again. Yes. But what will be the next step? Awesome. Yes. What do I have to do next? I have one more step. No, it's not quadratic, not polynomial, not square root or anything. What do I do? That's what I said. Do not get intimidated by log. It's just a number. Do you think they love each other? Exactly. Of course, these two terms with x have to be on one side, and the terms without x on the other. Right? That's how we solve linear, correct? 
2x log 5 minus x log 3 equals negative 3 log 5 minus log 3. Very, very good. Well done. Next. Now you will tell me combine like terms. And I say, sorry, I can't. And then you will say, oh, then there is another option. And you will tell me the other option. When we cannot combine like terms, what do we do? And there are two keywords in math. And there are more than two, but two key words that we remember in this class. Yes? So it's 2x log 5, would it be plus x log 3? But if I move it from the other side, what happens? OK, so then why is it negative 3 log 5? Because I move it to the other side. So aren't the other ones on the other side? But they are independent. Then they don't depend on one another. If one term is on this side and I move it here, it's negative. If I move it from here to the other side, it's negative. I, they are not dependent on each other. So two key words in this class, please refresh our memory. Simplify and factor. Which one works here? Of course, what? Of course, the common factor. Exactly. What is left in parentheses? Well done. 2 log 5. Minus log 3. And now please tell me what is x equal to. Excellent. Thank you, Eric. Of course, you will not attempt to simplify anything, correct? Because these are terms. You can't touch this. That's it. So that's the final answer. What if we want to check? So this is the exact. If we want to check, we have to put it in the graphing calculator and approximate it. Let's do it. OK. Parentheses around the numerator, please. 2. No, I'm sorry. I was looking at the denominator. So minus 3 log 5. Close the parentheses. Minus log 3. Close the parentheses. Close the parentheses for the numerator. Divided by left parentheses. 2 log 5. Close. Minus log 3. Close. Close again, enter. So the approximation is negative 2.7954, if I use four digits. Now I want to check my answer. So we started with 5, power, caret, parentheses, 2, times the previous answer, plus 3, close the parentheses, come down, minus 3, caret in parentheses, the previous answer, minus 1, close the parentheses. If the answer is correct, what should the answer be of this calculation? Should, what should it be? I, I just didn't hear. Excellent. Very good. So indeed, this is the exact answer. And this is the approximation. So are you looking for both now? When, like, it depends if you want to check. If you okay. want to check, you need that. Okay. Uh, if the problem is asking you just for the exact, you only give this. Okay. Very good. Uh, do you think we need another, or can we move on? No. OK. So the other one like this is 42. And this is 7 raised to 2x plus 1 equals 3 raised to x plus 2. You have two minutes. Two minutes.
One minute. We have an answer. Yes. X equals negative. Uh, I need to Okay. That's okay. That's, I want the exact, really. Yes? Do I have to do it? Anyone needs me to do it? Yes. Okay. So we apply natural log to 7 raised to 2x plus 1, and natural log to 3 raised to x plus 2. Then we bring down 2x plus 1, natural log 7, equals x plus 2, natural log 3. We distribute 2x natural log 7 plus natural log 7 equals x natural log 3 plus 2 natural log 3. Is this okay so far? Okay, then I have to move terms around because it's linear. 2x natural log 7 minus x natural log 3 equals negative natural log 7 plus 2 natural log 3. These two cannot be combined. We have to factor out. And this is what we get. Perfect. I got the same answer. Well done. Thank you. We continue now with log equations. Here's my first question to you. Um, did we have to state restrictions for when we solved rational equations? Did we have to, have to uh, state restrictions when solving exponential equations? Why? Because the exponential function is defined on everywhere. No restrictions. Well, log is a function with restrictions. So when we solve log equations, we have two options. And you choose the option you prefer. First option, check the solutions. Of course, back in the original problem. The second option is the one that I prefer, but you don't have to. You choose state domain. State domain. I will use this, but feel free to use this if you like it. Okay. So here's our first log equation. On page 515, uh, let's say 54 log base 5 of x minus 7 equals 2. Okay, first question for you. 
where is the domain of this function? What do I have to write in order to find the domain of this function? Correct. Log is applied to x minus 7. x minus 7 must be never 0. Must be positive. So this is the requirement. We cannot apply log to any quantity unless that quantity is positive. Very good. So then we have x greater than 7. Domain is 7 to infinity. So now I'm ready to solve the equation. What if I get the solution negative 3? What would you say? What if I get x equals 15? Correct. So once I have the domain, I am not obligated to go back and check. If you say I don't want to state the domain, fine, but you have to go back and check. The reason why I prefer this method is twofold. Number one, we practice finding domain of log functions, which is very important. And number two, I may forget to, to go back and check. It's possible, right? But if I have the domain, it's unlikely that I will forget because I spend time to find it. I think I'm not going to forget to go back and say, oh, it's in here or not. Okay? So I don't know how to solve this, but I know that it's equivalent to an exponential equation. What exponential equation? What, which exponential equation? I don't know, this is a 5, so seven. Exactly. Equals? That's it. Awesome, Amanda, thank you. So this is 25 equals x minus 7, which means x equals 25 plus 7, which is 32. Okay. I don't have to go back and check. If you want, you can. But is it in there? I would say yes. Okay, this was a warm-up, of course. Okay, let's go down to business now. Uh, 71. On the same page, 515. 71, we have log base 2 of x plus 2 minus... Uh, log base 2 of x minus 5 equals 3. Did I copy from two problems or three problems? Let's see. Uh, log base 2 of x plus 2, that's correct. Minus log base 2 of x minus 5, that's... Oh, no. Okay, good. Well, now I see here two log functions. What is the condition for this to exist? I have to write it. Awesome. What is the condition for this one? Very good. I'm looking for the common domain. Both functions have to exist at the same time, otherwise I will not have anything to subtract. So this one says greater than negative 2, and this one says gra x greater than 5. Let's graph them for now. We don't have to. So like it can't be negative 2, right? Yes, that's true. That's why it's not equal to. Yes, correct. So negative 2 to infinity, let's say this is negative 2. So this is in blue. And then 5 to infinity, and this is in red. I need both colors, meaning blue and red. Why? Because I need to choose x values, or I can accept the solution in the x values where both functions exist. If one of them doesn't exist, that cannot be the solution. So where do I see both colors? That's where I get the common domain. In other words, if the solution is not a number strictly greater than 5 will be disregarded. Good. Now I have to remember what to do with this and where it's coming from. What does this represent? What does it represent? from the properties of log. I know what to do with that. What do I do with it? Log base 2 of x plus 2 over x minus 5. Thank you very much. Well done. 
So this is, I have no idea what to do, but I know it can be changed into an exponential equation, which is, very good, equals. Very good, awesome. Now I have to dig deep. What is this now? It's no longer a, a, a logarithmic. Um, if it has x in the power, as the power, yes. But it has rational. no rational. Awesome. So this is 8 over 1 to trigger your memory over, and on the other side I have this. What am I getting at? What am I really telling you here? Exactly. So we started with a log equation and we ended up with a rational one. And now, yes, I will have to cross multiply. And I have 8x minus 40 equals x plus 2. Okay, what type of equation is this now? Exactly. Have to move terms around. So 7x equals 42. So then x equals? I'm not sure, but I don't have to go back and check because I worked hard for this. Is this acceptable? It is acceptable. That's how we deal with log equations.